we'll be, we will begin the Mass uh, in just a few minutes. But just so everyone uh, knows, this was Sister Margaret's request that we have uh, her Mass, a Mass celebrating her life when the family could get together shortly after she passed. And then her body has been donated for medical research. Then when um, we receive at Nazareth the cremation of Sister Margaret, we will have another mass in her honor at the convenience of the family. And then we will lay her to rest in the Nazareth Cemetery. So just so everyone knows, this was her request, and we are honoring that. Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, it's my privilege to welcome all of you to this funeral liturgy for a very dear person, Sister Margaret Holman, or as we call her, Margie. We give a special welcome to Margie's family, coworkers, colleagues, directees, and all who are here today, and th those who are watching on closed circuit television. Our hearts go out to each one of you as you cherish memories of this very special person who has returned to her God. We also want to thank the staff at Nazareth Home and here at, on Carrico Hall for taking such good care of Margie. Margaret was born on November 12, 1922, in Louisville, Kentucky, to Henry Conrad and Anna Mae Torhey Holman. The example of her parents shaped who Margie became. Her mother was from County Clare, Ireland, and her father was a hardworking plumber who loved his family and his faith. Margie attended Holy Name School in Louisville with her sister, Mary Virginia, and her brother, Pat. Because her mother believed in education and that good education was essential, she approached the SCNs at Presentation Academy and asked them if they would consider accepting her two daughters if the family paid half of the tuition. Both daughters did attend presentation and graduated. Margie enjoyed sports and was president of her class. She and her sister were awarded scholarships to Nazareth College, now Spalding University. Margaret became involved with the Sodality Federation in Louisville and was encouraged by Father Raymond Treese to be its president. 
I didn't want to do it, she said, but he had more confidence in me than I had in myself. The Sodality worked especially hard to extend hospitality and courtesy to the Sodality members of the African American parishes in Louisville. She already was becoming conscious and aware of the effects of racism. Margie graduated from Nazareth College summa cum laude in June 1944 with degrees in math and chemistry. After graduating from Nazareth College, Margie worked as a chemist for the Louisville Goodrich Company. These months gave her the time she needed to question where God was leading her. Was it marriage and family or religious life? On a Gaudete Sunday, she came to the decision that she would enter the convent. She told God, quote, I will try it out, and if it's not for me, I'll get sick, and I'll come home. I'm afraid if I don't, I'll miss your blessings. She soon realized that the path she had chosen was blessed by God for her, and she prayed against getting sick. Sister Margaret became a teacher and eventually taught in missions in Kentucky, New Orleans, Louisiana, and in Virginia. She earned her doctoral degree in chemistry from St. Louis University and taught at Spalding University, formerly called Catherine Spalding College, formerly called Nazareth College. She became very interested and, and it was a passion for her to work on behalf of the poor. In the 1960s, Margie became increasingly active in working for social justice and social action. She took part in local marches for civil rights, worked as a staff assistant to Mayor Charles Evers in Fayette, in Fayette Mississippi, and helped African American citizens in their effort to vote. In Dayton, Ohio, she started a women's group which met monthly to discuss and educate members on various social justice issues. Sister Margaret traveled to Kansas City <clears throat> to take part in a meeting against the Vietnam War. Participants at that meeting were encouraged to bring about social systemic change. Quote, in those days, people didn't think nuns should be trying to change the systems she recalled. This did not deter her, however. In 1971, she moved to Washington, D.C., where she was one of the founding members of Network, a social Catholic social justice lobbying group. It is still in existence today. Part of her responsibility was to educate sisters on social justice issues of the time. Network also lobbied for peace between Palestine and Israel. In 1973, Sister Margaret was chosen to attend the Paris Peace Talks to end the war in Vietnam. She also submitted testimony before two congressional committees advocating for a ban on nuclear weapons testing. Margaret said, <clears throat> quote, my mother and dad disagreed about some things, but were always united when it came to faith. It affected me a lot that they disagreed, and I came to know that conflict is a difficult thing. I had to really work on my ability to speak up on what I believed was important. Strangely enough, however, I didn't feel that same kind of hesitation when it came to speaking out on social justice issues. And speak out she did, often to the consternation of us, her sisters, who were listening. 
she would say to us, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about this? I told her several times, Margie, you're like a cork. People want to shut you up and push you down, and you just pop up someplace else and continue talking and challenging us to act for justice. She was all about action and change. Listen to this. In 2016, at age 94, she wrote to the newly appointed Secretary of Defense, General Mattis, and gave him some pointers on what he could do to make our nation's military better. The past several years, she visited the women's jail in Louisville and listened to stories of incarcerated women and did what she could to boost their self-confidence. She said, I believe we are called to follow the words of St. Vincent de Paul, do what is put before you. And she did just that. Another quote of St. Vincent de Paul's seemed to describe her life well. If God is the center of your life, no words are necessary. Your mere presence will touch hearts. And touch hearts, she did. She loved Thomas Merton's I don't know where I'm going prayer and quoted Thomas Merton in her own prayer to God. I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all I do. Margie, I am certain that God is pleased that you faithfully have lived out your desire to please God. And now you live in fresh newness of life. Well done, Sister Margaret, good and faithful servant. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with all of you. Amen. We pause to ask God's healing and forgiveness for ourselves and for one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant God that the soul of Margaret Homan, who for love of Christ walked the way of charity, may rejoice in the coming of your glory and with her sisters and brothers delight in the everlasting happiness of eternity, which we ask in the name of Jesus. A reading from Paul to the Philippians. I was above reproach when it came to justice based on the law, but the things I used to consider gain, I now count as loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss in light of the surpassing knowledge of my Savior Jesus Christ, for whose sake I have forfeited everything. I count everything else as rubbish, so that Christ may be my wealth. Indeed, that I be found in Christ, not having any justice of my own based on observance of the law. The justice I possess is that which comes through faith in Christ. It has its origin in God and is based on faith. All I want to know is Christ and the power of the resurrection and how to share in Christ's sufferings by being formed into the pattern of Jesus' death, perhaps even to arrive at the resurrection of the dead. It's not that I have reached it yet or have already finished my course, but I'm running the race in order to grab hold of the prize if possible since Christ Jesus has grabbed hold of me. I don't think of myself as having reached the finish line. I give no thought to what lies behind, but I push on to what is ahead. The Word of God. Lip. 
lips will glorify you. My soul is thirsty. Thus will I bless you while I live, lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name, as with a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsty. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would never have died. Even now, I am sure that God will give you whatever you ask. Your brother will rise again, Jesus assured her. I know he will rise again, Martha replied, in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they should die, will come to life. And whoever is alive and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, Martha replied. I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into this world. When Martha said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, telling her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard this, Mary got up quickly and went to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord.
Margie's choice of readings are indicative of her deep desire for union with Christ in the midst of her unrelenting action for justice. Margie did everything with passion, style, commitment. As she aged, she became more open and free in the acknowledgement of her human condition and her limitations. Although she continued to want, I quote, her superiors to be more reasonable. <laughs> Early on, Margie desired and struggled to be a contemplative in action. She understood that action for justice is a constitutive dimension of the preaching of the gospel. This was evidenced in all that Janice related. She also worked with the Foundation for Arab-Israeli Reconciliation so early on. She accompanied Father Bob Drynan in a plane to go to Mississippi to work for the civil rights. As one of the originals at the prompting of Katie Flaherty, she was the uh, secretary of our Corporate Responsibility Committee. Up until recently, as Janice said, she made regular visits to the women in jails, praying with them and listening to them. Sometime in the 70s, Margie experienced a longing, a yearning to know Christ and the power of his resurrection in a more significant manner. She made a 30-day retreat in Louisiana that rooted her in Ignatian spirituality. And this seems to have begun her contemplative direction and her addressing God as my love. Margie and four others, Vivian Sablehouse among them, began a house of prayer here on campus and invited people for retreats. She was scrupulously committed to annual Jesuit retreats and had a reserved room for her at Milford up until two years ago when she could no longer navigate the distance. She was into Zen and psychosynthesis, always searching for the integration of her action and her prayerful contemplation. How suited then to Margie is her selection of the readings. Martha and Mary in John's Gospel today Disparate characters, Martha into action, Mary into reflection. At the time of Lazarus, their brother's death, Martha hears Jesus is coming and goes to meet him. Mary sits quietly at home. Martha immediately puts Jesus on the defensive. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But characteristically, she tones it down. Even now, I'm sure that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus assures her, your brother will rise again. Martha quickly retorts, I know he will rise again on the last day. Action-oriented Martha probably was thinking, but Jesus, that is then the future, and this is now the present. Jesus, if only you could be more reasonable. Jesus is patient and understanding. He reminds Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus puts it to her. Martha, I have life now, and I will possess it hereafter. The believer doesn't die, but, but possesses true, eternal life. So Lazarus' death, his physical death, is just temporary. Do you believe this? Martha gets it and makes a strong profession of faith. Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Martha knows who Jesus is. She knows that she and Mary and Lazarus are loved and esteemed by Jesus. At this moment, however, she diverts to her sister Mary. John tells us that Martha went back to Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here calling you. Yes, Mary knew Jesus was there. But we are not certain if Jesus called Mary or if Martha 
Behold, Mary, Jesus called her. At any rate, here is contemplative Mary getting up quickly to go to Jesus, quietly, without hesitation. Margie wrote in her Reflections of My Spiritual Journey, quote, I was praying over this passage in John and a few verses beyond, where Jesus, Mary, and Martha go to visit Lazarus' tomb. As Jesus walked up the hill, I could see it clear as day. He had his arm around Mary. With his other hand, he was leading Martha. Margie continued, if I were to immigrate, integrate my Martha and Mary, it was going to have to be through Christ. Christ understood that Mary needed his arm around her to let her know that she was loved. Martha needed lots of guidance, so she had his hand in hers. Many of us may have thought Margie was persistent, stubborn as a mule. Margie, I think, would have thought of it more as righteousness, the righteousness which came from her deep faith in Christ. As Margie aged, many of us were awed at her patience in her loss of vision, hearing, mobility, and active ministry, yet never feeling sorry for herself, never complaining. Her selection from Philippians reflects her contemplative praying. I have suffered the loss of many things, but I regard them as rubbish, so that I may be found in him. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. I press on because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Margie is now alive in the fullness of Christ, alive and seeing and hearing, integrated and familiarly addressing God as my love. We, her sisters in community and her family, pray that we might strive with Margie's courage generosity and tenacity to be contemplatives in action, undergirding our action in prayerful reflection as we do our best to make our world more just and peace-filled through Christ Jesus, who is love incarnate. These are the prayers of the people. The uh, intercessions for the funeral mass of Sister Margaret Holman. God of all life, with faith and trust in your ever-present goodness, we bring our petitions to you. Our response will be, God of mercy, hear us. For Margie, that her life has now greeted, for Margie, that her life is now greeted with the joy of your eternal embrace. We pray. For all of Margie's family and friends, may we be inspired and strengthened to greater generosity in behalf of the gospel. We pray. For victims of injustice, violence, and poverty, we pray. 
for all of us as we struggle with our various limitations in this life. May we find ways to be the compassion of Christ for others, we pray. Giver and sustainer of all that is good, you are truly a vigilant father and compassionate mother to us all. Listen to our prayer this day and give us what we need to faithfully complete our journey in life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God Almighty. Be gracious, God, to Margie, your servant, a sister of charity of Nazareth, for whose salvation we offer you this sacrifice, that as in the flesh she ministered to Christ, in others, so may she rise up with all your faithful ones to everlasting glory, which we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For through Christ, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in the company of Margie and all of heaven, we praise you without end.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with Mary, the mother of God, and her spouse, Joseph, with saints Mary and Martha, with the prophets, apostles, the martyrs, our founders, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our bishop Joseph, the leadership of our community, our visitors, Margie's family and friends, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of we gathered here, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful one, gather to yourself all your people scattered throughout the world. Remember Sister Margaret, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him 
in the resurrection. When from the earth, Christ will raise up in the flesh those who have died, transforming our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own. To all our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, grant kind admittance to your kingdom. With them, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ Jesus, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Father. Deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the church peace and unity and charity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with all of you. Amen. Now we share that peace. The Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the banquet, Lord. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Replenish with these gifts, we humbly ask you, God, to grant through this sacrifice that Sister Margaret, whom you call to be among the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth and who served your church, now free from the bonds of death, may receive a share with those who have ministered so well and enter into your joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. When former Governor Bashir was running for office, someone in Marion County asked me to have a prayer for his reception. And I mentioned to Margaret that I was very uncomfortable doing that at a political rally. And she said, oh no, you've got to get your feet in the door. So I composed a prayer which excoriated Kentucky for neglecting its natural resources and for polluting it and for the social injustice, etc. And she was very proud of it when I showed it to her. However, <clears throat> the one who requested it told me later, I think I'm glad I asked you to do that. <laughs> that was Margaret Stamp. The Lord be with all of you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in 